Did you know that a hundred years ago, a German architect devised what might be the most audacious plan in history? He proposed to drain the entire ocean. Yes, you heard it right. When it comes to engineering mega projects, this idea stands out as the most ambitious ever conceived. It surpasses the grandeur of the pyramids of Giza, the magnitude of the Hoover Dam, and even the ingenuity of the Panama Canal. But what drove him to propose such a daring scheme? And perhaps most intriguingly, could his plan have succeeded? Lebensraum. To understand this interesting story, let's go back to the 19th century when many Europeans, especially in Germany, were talking about something called Lebensraum. In simple terms, Lebensraum means living space. The idea is straightforward. As a country's population grows, the people need more space to live. In the 1920s, Adolf Hitler became interested in this idea, and it greatly influenced his thinking. He believed that as Germany became more powerful, it would need more living space. Other Europeans had similar thoughts. Populations were increasing all over the continent, and there wasn't enough room for everyone. These crowded countries were competing for space, like balloons in a small room, and many people thought that conflict was inevitable. There were also concerns about energy needs. As populations grew, they needed more energy, which meant that resources like coal and oil became increasingly important. Overall, it seemed like there would eventually be a war over new living space in Europe. These expanding countries needed land and resources, and it seemed like their only option was to take them from each other. However, in the 1920s, another German, Hermann Serbel, started to look at the problem in a completely different way. He came up with one of the most incredible plans in history. He called it Atlantropa. This name was made by putting together Atlantic and Europa, and it was meant to make people think of Atlantis, the legendary city under the sea. It's hard to decide which seems more believable, the story of Atlantis or the plans for Atlantropa. To explain it simply, Sorgel wanted to empty the Mediterranean Sea. By getting rid of all that water, he thought he could make new land for Europeans to live on and solve the problem of needing more living space without starting a war. The Mediterranean is about eight times bigger than modern Germany, so that's a lot of extra room. Sordil imagined turning the newly dry land into big fields for farming and building towns and cities where people could live without worrying about not having enough space. Plus, with no more Mediterranean in the way, it would be easier for people to travel between Europe and Africa. That would mean even more space for living, as Europeans could move to Africa and start new communities. Sorgel got the idea from a real thing that happened millions of years ago. In the past, the Mediterranean Sea got cut off from the Atlantic Ocean because of moving pieces of the Earth's crust. Without water coming in from the Atlantic, the Mediterranean dried up a bit and became much smaller. Then, when the Strait of Gibraltar opened up again, the Mediterranean filled back up. Sergio wanted to make something like this happen again, but he didn't want to wait millions of years for the Earth's crust to move. Instead, he thought he could do it with engineering. And so, this was Sorgel's insane plan. Sorgel had a big idea, to build a dam across the Strait of Gibraltar, replacing the natural barrier with a man-made one. But it wouldn't be easy. The strait was super deep, up to 900 meters in some places, and it was wide too, about 13 kilometers at its narrowest point. That's way bigger than any dam ever built before. But that was just the beginning. He also wanted to dam the Dardanella Strait and build another dam between Sicily and Tunisia. These dams would lower the water level in the Mediterranean, revealing locks of new land, twice the size of Germany. And the dams wouldn't just create space, they'd also make electricity. Sergil hoped to use them as power stations to support cities and Europe's energy needs. People liked his idea. They thought it might be better than going to war. Architects and engineers even came up with new plans to improve on Sorbel's original idea. Using a series of smaller dams instead of one big one, they thought it could work, especially after seeing the impressive Zwitterzee works in the Netherlands. But Sorbel didn't stop there. He wanted to connect Europe and Africa, turning them into one continent called Eurofrica. He planned to build more dams, even across the Congo River, to create new land and bring water to the Sahara Desert. It was a huge, ambitious plan, but some people thought it could happen. Problems and Criticism Not everyone liked these ideas. Looking back, they seemed to reflect Europe's colonialist attitude at the time. They didn't consider the people already living in Africa, who didn't want Europeans coming in and taking over their land. Sorto might have wanted to avoid war in Europe, 
but he didn't seem to care about the lives of African citizens. And there were other concerns too. People worried about safety. What if a dam collapsed due to an earthquake or a terrorist attack? It could flood all the towns and cities Sorgal had built. Then there was the cost. This project would have been incredibly expensive. The Zuderzi works, much smaller than Atlantropa, cost over a billion US dollars. Getting all the money needed would require cooperation from all European countries, which was unlikely back then. And many engineers doubted if Serbel's plans would even work. No dam like the ones he wanted has ever been built. Despite campaigning for it his whole life, Sorgel never got to see his plans come true. Instead, he saw his fears come to life as Hitler and the Nazis, driven by the desire for more living space, started World War II. Sorgel died in a car accident not long after, and the dream of Atlantropa faded away. What do you think? Is Sorgel's plan a good idea and could such a massive project be built? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to learn more about the Congo Dam, check out our video about it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.